Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Comic Art Live. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Mark Walters of BigFanboy.com. Joining me on this side right there is Mark Hay of SplashPageArt.com, one of the fine, finest original art dealers around. And uh, we are very excited to be back with you. We just did. We just did this little party. Like, what was it? Six months ago. But uh, it's it went so well, and we got so much good feedback that we're very excited to do it again. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome back to Comic Art Live, Paulo Rivera. What is up, Paulo? Uh, can you hey hear guys, us? What's up? How are you? There yeah, he I is. can. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And Paulo is oh, uh, very nicely. Uh, he's got his camera. We're gonna see him real quick. There he is. There he is. Look at that handsome, rugged man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's gonna show us um some live drawing here which we uh we love seeing that that's great uh working on a is this a commission or what is this exactly paulo uh no uh this is to be uh i guess mark's gonna sell it at the end of the show oh very i mean cool. i'm gonna make some progress i probably won't finish it during this but i'll, I'll finish it shortly thereafter okay very very cool uh so for those of you that are joining us, and for some reason this is your first panel of Comic Art Live, what took you so long? But if not, uh, we appreciate you guys being here the whole time. And uh, we will be looking at the comments section to see if anybody has any comments or questions or anything. So if you guys want to ask something, just post it in the comments and I will make sure that it does get asked. That's better, Mark. Now uh, Apollo is yeah. centered in the middle of the screen. So, um, You're welcome. but hey. Just in case anybody missed uh, the last time we did one of these panels, I, I guess, Paulo, let's let's kind of go into a little bit of just kind of generic background information, sort of tell people once again, like, you know, kind of how you got started. What was the impetus of you becoming uh, a comic artist and being so darn great? <laughs> <laughs> my, my parents encouraged me every day. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I was like every other kid. I loved cartoons and I loved comic books. And uh, my, my parents had an art supply store growing up, and I had a lot of time and a lot of art supplies, and I just kept doing what I was doing. And uh, eventually went to art school, Rhode Island School of Design for four years. Uh, met up with Jim Kruger in uh, 1999 at Megacon in Orlando. He had me do some work for him over a few years, and then introduced me to Marvel, and uh, introduced me to Joe Quesada, and then he, he's the one who gave me my first job. And I've been you know, still working for Marvel. That was, God, that was a long time ago, <laughs> 2002, yeah. so uh, 18 years. And what was the first book? The very first cover that I did was Iron Man number 63, and that ended up being used, uh, I guess, as the inspiration for the Iron Man Hall of Armors and the poster for Iron Man 3, you know, when he, when he had, like, all of them together at once. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did it again... Uh, I did a Iron Man 3 cast and crew poster where I got to use kind of the same composition uh, years later. And then the first uh, comic book was an 11 pager with Christopher Priest. Uh, it was the Doctor Doom story. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, I guess it was just 11 pages. You know, half, they had a, a, a series back then called Double Shot where they, they'd have two stories and they would often try out the uh, new artists. It was, it was a lot of fun. We've already got questions coming in, so I'm going to, I've got my own questions, but I'm going to try to make sure I get to as many of the comments that you guys have, because I want to make this about you. Uh, James Griffin would like to know, growing up, what was your favorite series to read? Uh, well, I, the thing was, is I wasn't much of a comic book reader. Uh, I, I mostly watched cartoons. When I finally got a car and could drive to the comic book store. I, I ended up buying like a lot of Alex Ross stuff. So that was kind of my, it, they weren't the first comics I had, but it was, it was the first ones that I bought with like my own money as, as often as I possibly could afford it. And so that would have been like 1994, five, I think. I know I was behind the curve on Marvels. So I, I saw Marvels at a comic book shop in Houston, Texas. I grew up in Florida, but I had family in uh, Houston. And they had the, the hardcover. Not far from here. Yeah, at, at that's that's awesome. Yeah. What was the what was the yeah, comic was, shop in Houston? Do you remember? Uh, it it was like not Third Rock from the Sun, but like Planet something, uh, Blue Building. Uh, it was pretty pretty big store. Uh, you know, and like everything in, in Texas is freestanding because <laughs> they got the real estate. But uh, I can't remember. 
I, I actually I went there like almost every time I went to to Houston, but now I can't remember what the name of the store was. Uh, but yeah, that's where I bought Marvels and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, oh, oh, sorry. I think I think my baby just took <laughs> a face plant. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, that's I don't know cool. If you guys hear that? Yeah, I, a I little didn't, bit. I didn't but hear it's not. It's, not I've, it's subtle. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got noise canceling headphones on, but I felt it. So my voice bad. Uh, uh, let's see. We've got yeah. we've got some more questions here. Let me get a couple more of these. Okay, so Jeffrey Tanberry would like to know how did your dad get involved being an inker, and did he start on your pencils? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, well, he's he's worked with a lot of stuff for the last uh, twenty years or so. He's done custom motorcycles, but when I was put on to Daredevil. I, it was giving me my first book where I was actually trying to hit a monthly deadline. And even so, it was it was almost bi-monthly because I was sharing duties with uh, Marcus Martin. But I brought my dad in in 2011. And, uh, you know, he obviously knew how to draw and how to ink. But uh, he just mostly I needed to show him how to use Photoshop <laughs> and just you know, be part of the digital production line. Because he was still in Florida and I was in uh, New York at the time. And so, uh, yeah, 2011, that was his very first work. And since then, he's actually started inking uh, for Joe Quinones, a friend of mine from RISD. Uh, and I think last year, maybe the year before, he, he worked a lot more for Joe than he did for me, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and, great job. and you know, and he, he won, uh, what was it, uh, Best Inker this rookie year. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's he's, just, it's so cool. It's so cool to have that kind of legacy there, you know, that you both, you guys are doing such amazing work. Oh, thank you. Okay. Let's see. We've got more questions here. Um, Andy Larkin uh, is asking, Hey, Paulo, do you think you'll return to a daredevil or mainstream character run in the future? Thanks Andy from London, UK. Oh yeah. I just, I just sent Andy uh, some, some prints, I believe. Um, will I return? Probably not anytime soon, <laughs> to, to be perfectly honest. I, uh, I keep getting some pretty awesome offers, but I've had to turn them all down just because I just, I don't have the time. Uh, I do, I would love to come back to comics eventually, but, uh, until the world gets into better shape, uh, I can't really, I have to be pretty flexible as far as my schedule goes and publishing is about as unflexible as it gets so someday hopefully very very cool and uh, let's see casey andrew uh hi mark hi mark and paulo <laughs> any treasured pieces <laughs> any treasured pieces of original art in your collection paulo oh yeah yeah actually i just bought one here i've got it right here oh uh, let's see Oh, they must not be that treasured if I can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I, I want to show them all. And it's, it's By the way, I, I have to agree, I have to appreciate the fact that somebody just asked this question, and we're literally looking at Mark with portfolios aplenty on the right of him, the full of okay. original art. Oh, Sorry. Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> this this is uh, so. If any any time that I. Uh, Anytime that I actually commission artwork, uh, I, I try and keep it to uh, Ninja Turtles. So this is by Al, I think his name's Gofa, uh, G-O-F-A. And uh, it's probably not, not safe for work here, but <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Uh, so I just, I just bought that. I ordered that at like the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and then the other one I want to show you guys uh, see, the thing is, I have this pile of like stuff I need to get framed, and it just never gets framed. Don't well, you actually, have people for that? Yeah. So this is something I drew, but my dad painted. Uh, wow. Wow. So it was it was for um, uh, the Alien Three. Dark Horse did a a retelling of Alien Three using William Gibson's focus using William Gibson's original script. 
And uh, this was supposed to be done in the style of like, uh, um, like a communist mural, <laughs> because the uh, you know you always hear about the Whalen Yutani Corporation. Well, there's a, a, a rival, and they're all communists in space. And so we kind of went with uh, Diego Rivera style to do like these uh, murals on a spaceship. So I love that piece. And then hold on, there's one more I want to show you if I can find it. Okay. Because you guys are gonna you guys are gonna love it. It's worth it. This is uh, Gabriele Delotto shredder uh, oh wow man. look at that that's great yeah yeah i told you it'd be worth it uh so i gotta get this from was that an I've art trade years. yeah yeah i did a um i think we were, we were at new york comic-con one year and he asked me to do a ghost rider for him and it was not nearly as cool as the shredder that he gave me. <laughs> and he even waited he even waited longer i took me forever to get the ghost rider done but he did this like ridiculously quickly. Uh, Very nice. Still like one of my favorite pieces. So yeah, yeah. To answer your question, I have examples. That is fantastic. Wow, great. Uh, I yeah, I really show... need to get that stuff framed. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to show people. Um, Mark, Mark, and I both were kind of you know we were sitting here drooling and talking about this phenomenal alien piece that you've done, which I am. Getting ready to put oh, yeah. up on the I've screen got, here. I've, I've actually I've got that right here as well. Oh, okay. Well, if yeah, if oh, you want to show it, we can just do it that way. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So oh, it's pretty hey. big. It's so it's so big that uh, I actually had to reconfigure my desk uh, in order to fit it. Because uh, you know my my studio is kind of set up for eleven by seventeen, thirteen by nineteen. If I'm feeling fancy. Uh, and then anything over this, like this is literally as far as I can go. I can't pull, push it up anymore, so I've got to do it sideways. There is an alien. Uh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Well, look at that. Wow. Now, so, Apollo, so, I have to ask, like on a piece like this, how long are we talking? Oh, uh, 100, 176 hours. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it, was slowed, it was slowed down. Um, so originally, I was trying to figure out whether or not to do it digitally. And at the time, my computer was giving me so many issues. Both, both Photoshop and Wacom were conspiring against me, and it was just something I, I could not surmount. So I eventually, I just, I was so frustrated. I was like, you know what? I don't need them. <laughs> and so I did this, uh, like I did the initial sketch digitally, and then everything else is completely traditional, like me getting out the compass and the ruler, and you know dividing 360 by eight <laughs> like doing all of these little tick marks just to keep everything in line and yeah it was it was a lot of work but i'm i'm really glad i got to like you know do that again because it had been a while since i like constructed anything geometrically um, yeah you know just, just a lot of your so art easy genuinely appreciates that and what is the, <laughs> well, I, what, I knew you <laughs> i knew you would mark <laughs> what is the overall size of that piece uh, it is, it's actually, it's funny. It's, it's thin and tall. So the outside dimension, it's got a one inch border and the outside dimensions, I think are 30 by 12 inches, uh, no, 14 inches across a 12 inch, uh, image. Width. Okay. So, uh, wow. fantastic. Yeah. Do you have an image it's of the full not piece? That, mark? Not that wide. Uh, I, I have an image of the full piece, but I'm still kind of working on that. So uh, before I get to that, uh, we have Bill Cox in here from ComicArtFans.com. Bill, you want to say hi to everybody? Oh, hey, guys. Uh, Sorry. Hi, Bill. Hey, pa hi, Paulo. How are you, man? Hi. I'm good. Hold on. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny hands. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's been a it's been a very long day, but uh, thank you, Paulo. I'm glad yeah. I'm glad you could uh, make some time for us today. Uh, I I told oh, Mark my, the other day, it's like I would always make room for Paulo. You know, <laughs> you're all here. Right. Oh, okay. And all right. Yeah. Too. I'm sorry, Mark. I I thought I said that to you. Maybe I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, Oh, I don't have my splash page shirt on right now either. Shoot. Yeah, you're supposed to do that. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I've, Bill I've, I've, I Anthony's, Anthony's shirt is on right under here, but I, I'll keep it buttoned up. 
All right, there we go. Wait, 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 wait. Here, let me, let me, let me. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Nobody wants to see you take your clothes off, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay, so I am trying to get this alien piece. Let me see if I can get it loaded in here so that we can show the full thing. Hey, Paolo, my memory is often um, horrible, but aren't, weren't you, didn't you finish an eight page story for something that uh, the schedule keeps getting pushed um, with somebody? Yeah. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. I'm not even, I'm not even celebrating until it's actually out. It was, it was, I started re, uh, writing it a year ago and then I finished it in February of this year. And then the world went to hell and, uh, you know, it, it just kept getting pushed back. So now, tentatively, the publishing date is the 25th of this month. Uh, but and what is the project? It is a, it's, it's, right? it, it's just it's just an eight-page uh, short story starring Vision uh, with a few cameos in it. And uh, like I said, I, I wrote it and uh, painted it, but it's painted digitally. I'm sorry. Oh, nice job. <laughs> nice job. Old school. Uh, that's that's right. right. Sure. Yeah. Vintage. <laughs> 2003, I think, maybe four. Woo. Yeah, that's right when I met Mark. And it's got, it actually has, you know, Mark was a very gracious uh, booth booth leader. He he, he handed, he printed out, I think, four of these shirts. Uh, one for me, uh, Brian, the Cliff guy, and himself. Of course, the, the front is all uh, Mark. And uh, on the back, there is a Comic Art Fans, a vintage Comic Art Fans logo, I think. I can't look while I'm doing this, but I know it's there somewhere. All right? I see some artwork I recognize, but yeah, yeah. you're at the flash page, of course. Yeah, that's all right. It's far, it, was your, it was your booth. Bill, I have, yeah. a techni- I have a technical question. So I have this alien piece and I'm trying to show it, yeah. uh, but I'm not sure I'm doing it right. Do I upload it as a background or do I upload it as a video file? Overlay. Overlay. That's what it was. Sorry. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll have it up here in just a second, guys. In the meantime, let's take another quick question here from the chat room. Uh, uh, I, t- I hope I s- I'm saying your name right. Tanny. Is it Tanny Wong? Says, hi. Hey, Paolo, Mark and Mark. Uh, who are your favorite current artists? Paolo. Uh, my, favorite, current my favorite current artist artists. is Paolo Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the let's next see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, ev- everybody whose art I just showed you. Um, I also, who have I been looking at? What I like about uh, Instagram is that I can uh, all of a sudden discover somebody who has like a million followers who I've never heard of in my entire life. Um, you know, be- because they're not necessarily comics, they're not necessarily illustration, they don't necessarily live here. Uh, you know, worldwide now. Um, keeping with Alien, somebody I recently discovered was, they go by the name of Grin Death, I think. G-R-I-N and then Death. Uh, they're on Instagram. If you search them, they've been doing like uh, alien digital paintings, but like taking the design of the alien and just kind of all going nuts with it, doing all kinds of weird designs, kind of glowing stuff. And just a, you know, all around great painter. And I don't know what their real name is. That's the only problem about Instagram. Yeah. Just real quickly, I'm going to put this up on screen. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like pure Geiger, man. You're like, you're killing it there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was, I mean, I, I got, uh, where, where's the book? <laughs> so I got a book when I was. Come on, Mark, join in. All right, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> we're, we're joined by Batman. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this it's based kind of on it's inspired by this uh, Giger painting. I got this book when I was twelve, and I've been pouring over it since then. Uh, so yeah. I just I wanted to make something that was kind of this feel, uh, mm-hmm. but that it also included Rip, Ripley and the crew. Uh, you know, and it's it's not just Giger, so it's it's you know kind of an homage to both Giger and also Mobius, who did the design of the um, of the spacesuits, and also Ron Cobb, who did the design of the ships and the uh, hyperslick chamber. Yeah, Ron Cobb. We just so recently you know that's one reason I, I great guy. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's, you know, one reason I movie is because they use different artists to kind of Did we Oh, he muted himself. Oh, uh, Paulo, you think... muted yourself. Can you hear us? Yeah, I, Mark. I, I can unmute him. Okay. I, I don't think I can going. unmute him. I I just clicked on unmute mic and it's not working. Did oh. he do something on his end? Yeah, I tried it too. It says, "Oh, there he oh. is." Okay. Yeah, you muted yourself, Paulo, for a second. Am I back? You're back. Yes. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No worries. Uh, okay, so let's get. Uh, we got a few more questions here. I want to make sure I get to these. Um, Okay, so Peter Rowe would like to know who are your favorite DC characters besides Batman, and what are among your favorite non DC Marvel books? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, sorry, my for some reason my uh, my headset cut off. It's okay. Uh, uh, what was the question again? Uh, sorry. Okay, so the question from Peter Rowe. Uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen here so everybody can see it. Uh, the question is, who are your favorite DC characters besides Batman, and what are among your favorite non-DC Marvel books? I'm assuming favorite okay. non-DC Marvel books. Uh, let's see. Favorite DC characters besides Batman. Well, I've been itching to do a Wonder Woman story for a while. I actually, I, I pitched something earlier this year, but um, I don't, I, well, I, I definitely can't do it, but hopefully in the future, I, I would love to do a Wonder Woman story. I'd also love to do a Superman story as well. Basically all the JLA, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I, I definitely, I've always loved the DC characters, but I don't know them as well as the Marvel characters, just because I haven't worked for DC as much as I've worked for Marvel. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of Marvel stuff, like I just had to keep up with what the universe was was doing while I was working on certain things, uh, which is what I liked about the Marvel universe is like, you know, even you could read just one book, but they all kind of bled into other ones. Um, you know, for instance, like uh, when Doc Ock took over Peter Parker, uh, his, you know, took over his body, his first appearance was actually in Daredevil. I didn't I didn't draw it. Uh, Chris Somney drew it. But, you know, we knew that was coming and it was just something that we were all involved in, uh, even though we weren't on the uh, Spider-Man books. As far as non-Marvel uh, DC books, uh, well, I, I still love, you know, I was thinking about the other day was um, uh, the Private Eye, because uh, I was listening to a podcast, an interview with Marcos Martin, uh, is it off panel with David Harper? Uh, I was listening to that and just remembering how much I loved uh, The Private Eye by Brian K. Vaughn uh, with art by Marcos Martin. And just, uh, I thought it was a phenomenal book. And I also liked the way that they released it. I thought it was a really novel idea and, you know, still going strong. Very, very cool. All right. So let's see. Our next question comes from The Comic Book Lowdown. Question for Paulo from Afro Shades on Instagram. Do you still prefer using Photoshop as your prime? I'm going to put this up on screen. Do you still prefer using Photoshop as your primary art software? And what do you think of alternative softwares like Clip Studio? Uh, if I were starting over, I would probably learn Clip Studio first, uh, just because I am not a big fan of the subscription model. I mean, parts of it I do like. Uh, you know, I like always getting the newest features when they decide to upgrade things. But in the case of Photoshop, as I was mentioning earlier this year, they did some kind of, um, they messed something up. <laughs> it just made it so that I could not draw in Photoshop and it was absolutely maddening. And it just, it had to actually had to do with, um, like I could do it but I would have to rebuild all of my custom brushes. So not, it wasn't a thing that like affected everybody. It was just something that affected me <laughs> and maybe a few other people. And uh, so they didn't really care about it. And because, you know, with Photoshop, we're not their primary, uh, you know, customer. 
but with Clip Studio, like we're the reason they exist. So they're a little bit more receptive if we have issues, uh, you know, and that's even with Photoshop, like I have Adobe's ear, you know, I know people who work there and I yelled at them and it still took a good six months to figure it out. And even when they did figure it out, what they told me to do in order to fix it ended up wiping all of my presets. And, you know, you know, I've got 20 years <laughs> worth of just dumb little things to make Photoshop work better. And all of a sudden it gets wiped out, you know, and I did save most of it. So I, I've been slowly building it back over the last few months, but it was just kind of a rookie mistake that I don't think would have happened uh, with Clip because they don't, they don't have the same kind of pressures that Adobe has uh, just because it's just such a behemoth of a, of a piece of software. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. So, sorry. Sorry. I could talk about that all day. <laughs> no, short I, short answer. Good. Photoshop's great. Uh, Clip Studio is, is also great. I wish I knew it better. I have used it, but never for anything professional. Uh, Procreate is also great for the iPad. I just, I don't, never had time to really get, get to know it that well. No, yeah. no, but see, that's the thing. I mean, like when you get that kind of behind the scenes info, uh, you know, it's a lot of people do wonder about that stuff. So it's cool when you can kind of enlighten them on that. Okay. So we've got, uh, Jeffrey Tan, Jeff, Jeffrey Tranberry, uh, is saying, I love your cover work. What cover are you most proud of? Ooh. uh, all the children. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I definitely have my favorites. I, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what was the easiest. Uh, the um, the Spider Man Blue, the one moment in time, the fourth cover that I did, where it's just all blue. That was one where like it rarely just comes to me, and that was one instance where it did. Like I had the idea, I, I was sketched it out real quick. I sent it to my editor. He said, "That's great. Do it." I painted it quickly, turned it in and got paid. <laughs> it just everyone, everything went the way I always imagined it should go, but never actually does. And that's a great, that's such an iconic and great cover too. That's awesome. Thank, <laughs> I love thank that you. Cover. Thank you. <laughs> I know I've heard um, lots of comments about your uh, Salvador Dali um, esque ones that you did for Marvel with uh, the one with Wolverine. Um, oh, hold on. Hold I think on. you did like two or three, maybe four different Dolly um, pieces of Wave, right? It's been a uh, minute. I did, so. Yeah, I did one, but hold on. I want to show you guys since, since I've got you, my captive audience. Jeffrey Tranberry uh -huh. also adds uh, Hodorowsky's uh -huh. Dune is a must watch for comic art fans. I agree, Jeffrey. Very, very good. Uh, amazing doc. I Wait, wish I could is, see, I is, wish I could see that is, book he has. Is Jeffrey the one who works for Adobe? Uh, he has not commented, but we'll see in a minute. <laughs> you don't have to answer. He said thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, I love, I, you know, I only use Photoshop. I just, I get very, very angry about it sometimes. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you guys the, um, the sketches that didn't make it. So this was <laughs> turned, turned down by Marvel. As you can imagine. And then this one, it was based on another Dolly painting. I don't know if you can see that, but in the Dolly painting, this the wolf is a tiger and the woman is nude. And then there's this kind of like Dolly-esque background. I think that's... Do you have the image, yeah. the final image? Didn't you do... Oh yeah, Here's, this is the final, or there's the sketch. And then this is the, uh, where's the final? There, that's, that's the final. Yeah. A little, you know, a little more safe for work. And there's Asteroid M in the background. And then uh, all the little X-Men going to the Blackbird. Uh, nice. 
I don't think I ever noticed that. <laughs> but I, I still want to wow. do this one. I still want to do Wolverine being, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the, the Dali painting is called like, it's not like hyper crucifix or something, but it's got the word hyper in it. And, uh, Obviously, it's not an X; it's a cross. <laughs> I I think it it's the reason I want to do it so badly is because I think uh, the Catholic school that I went to, I think they had a, a a print of it up on the wall somewhere, and I was always kind of amazed that they they even put that up. And now you can go back and put your uh, your print of Wolverine next to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, disappointed so many nuns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. We get some more questions here. Uh, Robert Lee says, hey, guys, uh, Paulo, if you had to choose one Kirby creation homage to draw, who or what would you draw and why choose that character? Oh, jeez. There's just, there's so many. Um you know, I, I think I always just, I go back to Silver Surfer just because I love, I love drawing him. I love the story. Just like, I don't know. I, and also I've like, I've never, I've, I've drawn him professionally and whatnot, but I, I never got to do like my Silver Surfer story that I think is in me somewhere, but has never been done. Uh, so maybe, maybe someday. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah, I, I, I'd say Silver Surfer. Michael Delary says the Dolly is my absolute favorite. I think Mark got oh, off thank there. You. And I don't know if this is legitimate or not, but Atomic Bulldog Art says Hypercorpus Christi. Maybe answering your the name of the um piece you're talking about the dolly maybe i don't know oh it it could be yeah i mean it's a pretty famous and he may have used that trope uh in the past um or dolly good thing we all have google i thought it had hyper hypercubus corpus hypercubus maybe ah gotcha it was close yeah. Yeah, Corpus Hypercub Hypercubus. Welcome back, Mark. Sorry about that. I got knocked out for a second, but I'm back. No problem. Um, yeah, that's coming along nicely, Paulo. Thank you. Get another solo look there. Yeah, Mark, I heard you were reading this like right as I got knocked out, so thank you for covering that. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Not my first rodeo either. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, <laughs> Paulo, what, what is that pen you're using? What kind of pen is that? Uh, this is a Pentel pocket pen brush. So okay. uh, it um, it comes with little cartridges that you just replace. And I've been using this one for, I think, a year or two, maybe three. Uh, wow. But that, it's a nylon bristle. When you first get them, when you first get them, it's uh, white and then it fills up with ink and they kind of, as long as you treat them nicely, they, they never go bad. I just, I find it much more convenient and uh, cleaner than uh, getting out mm -hmm. uh, like you know, uh, a, uh, an ink pot. You know, I, I still prefer that. Like if, if I weren't so lazy, I think I would still do that, but I, uh, you just can't beat this convenience. Okay, so we uh, <laughs> all of these questions are, what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? Um, I'm probably going to screw this name up. Jellix, yep, uh, wants to know, uh, is that like is that like a mix six piddlick type name? Uh, <laughs> your favorite your favorite X-Men character? Um, uh, I you know, I can't, I go back and forth, but it usually ends up going back to Wolverine. But the thing is, like, I I want to see them all together. Like, I want to I want to see Colossus throwing Wolverine. Like, I like Wolverine more when he's being thrown. 
<laughs> so I, I, you know, I do, I definitely have my favorites, but I love seeing them interact as a team. Um, you know, I, I, I grew up on, on the, on the Fox uh, TV show in the nineties. So uh, when we got Disney plus, I, I rewatched a lot of those with my kids. And so now they've got that, that music stuck in their heads as well. Uh, so just that, that whole era, I just, you know, to me, that's, that's, you know, depending on when you grow up, they've been around for so long, everybody has their favorite. But for, for me, that's really when they, they got stuck in my head. Oh, look, uh, Mark is showing us uh, one of your pieces right now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is gorgeous. Oh, is that perfect? Wow. Is that the original? That's not the original, right? No, that is the ri that's the original. Oh, that's right. I did it small. Didn't I? I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, it's eleven by seventeen. It looks like. Uh, I think I think it's thir thirteen by nineteen. Yeah. Well, it, it's close. I did it, yeah, I did I, it as big. I did it as big as my my printer will allow. Because what I usually do is I I draw it digitally, and then I print out those pencils, and then I paint on top of that. Fantastic. Fastball special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was for uh, sideshow collectibles. Uh, same same people I did the alien piece for. And that piece will not be available when we auction off pieces at the end of this panel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be. But, the, the but if you are, yeah, if you are interested, contact Mark Hay at splashpageart.com. That's a fantastic piece. I love that piece. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I still, I still need to do, um, I'm in the process of edi editing uh, tutorials on both of those paintings. So the, both the alien and the fastball special. Cause I, I took lots of uh, raw video, but I haven't had time to splice it all together. Yeah. Mark, do you, uh, we're kind of getting a little bit close to the end here. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to do as we wrap up the panel? Sure. Sounds okay. good. All right. I'm going oh, yeah, to split the screen here. There we go. The piece that Paolo is drawing right now is a four inch by six inch um, painting that he is about to do. The Spider-Man and Carnage are ones that have already been sold uh, that were part of Comic Art Live uh, yesterday morning. Oh, but oh they've already been you, sold? Yes. <laughs> okay. But it's a good example to show you. So the one he's working on right now uh, actually has a little more detail. It's got the bust and background clouds. Um, so we're going to auction this one off. Um, and I don't know if Paolo is going to finish this right now, but it obviously will be finished to the uh, level of quality of uh, the Carnage and Spider-Man piece that you see to the left and right of it. Uh, so... Uh, I guess now is as good a time as anybody. Uh, any, if you're up for that, Mark. Um, yeah, sure. We can start taking bids in the comment section. And uh, here's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to start the bidding. Uh, Mark, now correct me if I'm wrong. We're going to start the bidding at $150. And we will do this in increments of, uh, by the way, these are four, four by six painted headpieces, or in this case, you know, ink. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there's actually, I would say there's arguably more detail in this piece than the two pieces that have already sold. But we're going to start the bidding at $150. We'll do $25 increments. If you would like to bid, go ahead and post your bid in the comment section. I will keep an eye on that. And we will uh, we'll kind of give you a countdown when we're getting ready to wrap things up. So who would like to kick off the $150 bid? Go ahead and post that in the comment section. Keep in mind, Paulo is still working on this. But uh, we're getting yeah. close. I, I could make a mistake and then watch the bids fade away. <laughs> so this is going to be pencil and ink as opposed to the painted one. Then it, it looks like now that you are. Well, it, it'll so, be, right. it'll have, it'll be like these ones where it'll be uh, watercolor over ink. We have okay. our, we have our first bid. Richard O has started us off at one. F okay, here we go. Casey Andrew is at 175. So we're currently at 175 on this piece. And we are going to keep this going at least until we have to wrap up the panel. And how this will work, folks, is once it's done, uh, you can contact Mark at splashpageart.com, and he will, you know, work out the details so you can settle up on that. Uh, and please only bid if you're really serious about this, because we, you know, we don't want to waste anybody's time. So yeah, and, and also I just want to say I really need 
the Lego Razor Crest set. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm counting on you guys. <laughs> How much is that? Is that for uh, you or one of your youngins? <laughs> who's got the Who's got um, the birthday coming up, or is this a Christmas thing? This or is, is this just this for is you? Just for my this is this is called self care. Okay, there you go, there you go. All right, we're at one seventy five. I'm still watching the comments, and we got a little while to go. So if anybody would like to beat one seventy five, just post it in the comment section. I will keep a running tally of who the bids are going in from. So I'm curious, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody asked this already, but you know, we had a lot of questions about who's your favorite, this, who's your favorite, that, uh, what is your favorite, uh, Batman era of art? Like, cause for me personally, I, I loved Norm Brayfogle on Batman. I kind of, you know, when I got into comics, he was kind of the hot thing and that was what I was following. And then I later kind of discovered the brilliance of Jim Aparo. Do you have a favorite Batman artist, someone that really kind of, you know, made a mark on influencing you? Uh, well, again, like just because of when I grew up, the big influence for me was, was the TV show. So the animated series was just like, you know, I, Batman, uh, the movie came out in 89 when I was eight and then the cartoon debuted in 92 so I was just like, you know, I was Batman for like six years in a row for Halloween. <laughs> I, was, I was just all about Batman. But the, the animated series is really what stuck with me. Uh, when I finally did get into comics, I, I actually went kind of back in time. And uh, it was, it was a, a friend of my mom's uh, gave me uh, The Dark Knight Returns. And then when I got to college, uh, somebody gave me Batman Year One. And so I, I, you know, I started in the '90s and I went, I worked my way backwards. So that's kind of where my Batman comes from. Uh, but it, you know, it's always a mix, and I and I, I like the character because he lends himself so well to so many different in, interpretations, I guess. But it, for me myself, it, that's usually where I come from. It's it's coming from, you know, a slightly more realistic version of the uh, the animated series, right? Which is of course where this this is from. Although this. Uh, in this case, it's it's not uh, fear gas; it's coronavirus. Yeah, I was going to say it's the corona-friendly uh, Batman. Yeah, it's topical, of course. <laughs> He's always had a mask. He was ahead of everybody. Oh wait, it didn't come yeah, out. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. I would love to see you do a cover for that new series they've got. Is it the? I forget what they call it, the adventures continue or something or not. I, that's not right. I have, I have some good news for you. Oh, you do. Yeah. I, I already did one. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll show it. I'll show it. Uh, if I can bring it up. Uh, yeah, here we go. As long as I don't knock off my signal. There we go. Oh man. So there Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, unfortunately, that was digital, right? Well, no, uh, the uh, the line art is real. The, okay. um, but I don't, I, I don't think I did, uh, I think it's only the inks. So I penciled it digitally and then my dad inked it. So we have original inks, but uh, it doesn't have a background and I didn't, uh, I didn't do any pencils. Gotcha. That's fantastic. So see, yeah, that was now, now, you guys in, that are listening in the comment section, you just saw uh, Paulo's Batman cover. You could own a nice Paulo Rivera Batman right now if you get the winning bid on this piece. So don't don't miss out. Don't regret it later. Yeah, if it doesn't go above 175, I'm going to start bidding myself because <laughs> I like it and I know it's undervalued um, because the <laughs> card is the carnage sold for 200 and that's just the face, although that is fantastic, but uh, um, we're getting to see this one, uh, obviously with background, you got- No, no self-dealing here, Mark. Hey, hey, I, I, collected, <laughs> I started dealing by collecting and eventually going into dealing, so uh, I uh, like- Okay, to, all right, I'll let it pass. Too. I, I got a few pieces on the walls as well. I think I owe you some pieces too. 
I, I would have to, I have to say, Mark, you know, I, I imagine, I mean, I collect a lot of original art myself, but just knowing that you're an original art dealer, you know, every time I see you like at shows or when I go to your store, I always think it must be so hard for Mark to only decide on like one or two pieces for himself when you're surrounded by so much great original art. It you is. Tremendous Obviously. amount of restraint. Well, the restraint is the, the bank... <laughs> the bank uh, <laughs> uh, balance is the restraint. Richard O yeah, asking, I mean, did Iron Man sell? Is that in reference to something else? Yeah. yeah um, so Paolo did Iron Man, which was fully painted. There you go. Uh, yeah, there it is. Wow. Uh, Spider-Man and Carnage. And yes, uh, Iron Man sold. By the way, we have a new bid of $200 from the comic book lock. I'm sorry, the comic book lowdown uh, at $200. That's where we're at right now. If you guys nice. would like that to beat that, twenty five dollars. I can get my razor crest. Yeah, you're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that thing? I th I think it's I think it's like one hundred seventy five bucks. Wow. Legos are yeah. not, they are not cheap, man. Nope. When I was a kid, I played with Legos all the time, and my parents always tried to communicate to me how expensive they were and i never fully comprehended it until i became an adult and saw yeah. lego, and saw a lego set that i wanted and i was like oh i want to buy this and i looked at the price <laughs> and i was like oh my god <laughs> yep yeah they're pretty proud of their uh where where is where is lego base is it like norway or something it's like somewhere overseas i can't remember is it is it denmark or yeah that's somewhere right. yeah yeah it sounds right denmark it's... so Pretty proud of those. Uh, that yeah, Denmark and they're, uh, they're they're still uh, they're still privately owned uh, as well. Yeah. yeah. Charlie Adlard has traded uh, some pretty expensive artwork for custom um, a custom Godzilla piece that Lego like made for him um, because oh, he wow. knows people in the organization. So. Um, uh, so yeah, you're not the only uh, comic book artist to have. Uh, and interest in Legos. Um, yeah. Tell you what, Paul, go ahead. Paul Lee is one of my artists, and he has actually worked for Lego and done some work for them um, with packaging and also, I think, a comic book um, for them. Uh, and I know he's a huge fan as well. So Tenny Wong is asking in the comments, uh, will there be a future spot for sale? I could probably answer this, but I think it's better if Mark does uh, just in reference to uh, commission lists and things like that. So, Mark, do you want to answer that question? Well, um, as far as normally uh, commissions are, are not offered by Paulo right now because um, he has had um, – he is behind on a personal list that he has been working off of for a million years. But um, <laughs> he and I did yep. talk about um, taking – um, are we doing one or two? What did you decide on, Paolo? Uh, four by six is like what you're seeing here. Are we uh, going to do two? And, uh, I, I can show you. I already started on them. I cut the paper. Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah. so we are going to offer uh, two spots. Um, are they going to be uh, similar to like Carnage and Spider-Man, whether the head or are we... Looking yeah, like yeah. I just, I, or... I just want to do the the simple, uh, the simple headshot. I, what I want is to be able to create an entire army of them, so I can make my own corner boxes. <laughs> nice. That's great. Uh, Casey Andre, uh, Casey Andre. I guess that's how you say that. Is the is this the only piece for sale during the panel? So we know whether it's the only item we'll be bidding for. Well, I think Mark kind of just answered that. But as far as the actual bidding process goes, yes, this is the only one that is being bid on and during this panel. Um, Mark did say that they're working on trying to do something for later. But as far as the bidding for right now, this will be the only piece you're bidding on. And we are currently at a bid of two hundred dollars from the comic book lowdown. So if anybody would like to beat that. You've got just a few minutes left. And I think Bill is back with us. Yeah, hey, Bill. Hey, I am here, just silent in the background. Yeah. 
Uh, Paula, I got to say, you know, this is the second time you've been with us doing this stuff. And it's just such a pleasure being able to not only talk with you, but watch you work and kind of hear your process and whatnot. So big time appreciation for you doing this again. Uh, hopefully we can make it a regular thing as long as it's cool with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This has been fun each and every time. And so uh, and of course, a big thing. And of course, a big thank you to Mark Hay with Splash Page Art for helping us set this up as well. Uh, and uh, Mark has always been very, very helpful in the process of getting these things together. Oh my gosh, I'm getting behind here. Okay, so Cayman, Le Cayman Leader is 225, and Cayman Leader is immediately beat out by Peter Rowe at 250. We are now up to 250 awesome. on the bids. See, once you start adding color, then people yeah. realize. <laughs> get out a bunch more. Get those paints back in front of the camera. <laughs> you got to pay for sales tax on that Lego. Come on. Uh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Might be able to get a couple of additional figures at this point. Yep. Yeah. You know yeah, what? We, 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 not to not to harp on Lego, but uh, the one thing that really blew me away, I think one of the last times I went into a Lego store in, in the mall, not that there's really that many malls left, but now they have this thing where you can literally put together like figures or buy individual pieces. And all I could think was, why did they not have this when I was a kid? I would be in there like every day putting the things together. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's pretty today. awesome. There's, there's one not too far from us and we love going there, or at least we did before everything. Shut yeah, down. these kids today don't realize how good they have it. Oh, don't worry, I tell them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Uphill, both ways. That's right, In both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you remember, Mark? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I was both <laughs> yeah. walking in Wisconsin growing up in the snow. We were walking to school in the first and second grade. These days, uh, that doesn't happen, I don't think. No, you take it. You take an Uber. Yes. <laughs> so now, Paulo, Paulo, you're doing. Uh, this is watercolor paint, right? Yeah, this is watercolor over uh, ink, and then for the background, uh, I'll do a, a colored line in acrylic, and it'll be mostly uh, kind of like a soupy green uh, in the background. Because that's the All color right. of coronavirus. So for everybody, <laughs> that's the color of coronavirus. So for everybody yeah, watching, this, uh, this is going to be a beautiful mixed media piece. You've got ink, you've got watercolor, you've got acrylics. Uh, there's a lot going on here. This is going to be a really nice yep. piece to have. So don't regret it later. I think the last time we did one of these and we had uh, multiple pieces up, they sold immediately. So uh, don't. Don't regret this later, folks. Jeffrey Tranberry in for two seventy five. We are up to two seventy five right now, and I think we've got thank just you, about Jeffrey. five minutes left. Yes, thank you, Jeffrey. Jeffrey knows what's up. He sees the quality. <laughs> so, Paulo, just real quickly, since we talked about it earlier, those alien pieces. Uh, tell people about where that's available. Uh, it's sideshow, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, they'll be up for pre-order on November 20th, and that's through their website, sideshow.com. And then uh, it's going to be offered as, I think, in two versions. One is 100% uh, cotton rag uh, gicle print at the same size that I painted it. And I, what is it? They give you an extra two inches of border. So I think it's like 16 by 24, no, 34, something like that. Uh, they're also going to do a big canvas print. And then once those are sold out, I will have my artist proofs, which is usually about 10% of the regular edition. So I'll have probably around 30 to 40 uh, pieces. I'm not sure if I'll be getting canvas as well, but uh, we'll see. So, uh, you know, the, the sideshow stuff, they're usually pretty good about marketing. So they, they typically uh, sell out pretty quickly. And then mine will be for sale through my website, uh, paularivera.bigcartel.com. Or if you just go to paularivera.com, P-A-O-L-O-R-I-V-E-R-A.com. And uh, I've got all the links up right there. All right. And, and then he, Peter Rowe. I buy the original away out of uh, Paolo's hands, and we can sell that on Splash Page Art. Yeah, if that's for when I want to buy... 
That, that's for when I want to buy the actual model they use for the Razor Crest. <laughs> that's when you want to buy when you want to buy an actual alien. You're gonna sell that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I that's that's when I could see Mark like insisting it has to be on the wall for a while. Uh, Peter Rowe is in for three hundred dollars. We are up to three hundred dollars right now. Nice. And Thank uh, you, the, Peter. Comic, the comic book lowdown says, "Dang, I'm over a barrel." Unfortunately, coronavirus also has my wallet on the same green. I totally feel you, man. I know uh, this this is a tough time for a lot of people, so we we totally understand. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to yell at anybody for not drawing my drawing of buying my drawing of Batman. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're going to keep it going a few more minutes, but just to kind of wind this up uh, again, I want to say a big thank you to Paulo Rivera. It's so great to have you back on Comic Art Live. I hope you guys that are watching are enjoying this. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed all of the panels so far. We've got one panel left for the day, and that is John Lucas coming up next. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and John's going to be doing some live drawing as well. But uh, again, thank you, Paulo. Thank you, Mark Hay from Splash Page Art. We appreciate you guys helping us uh, make this uh, much more entertaining today. It's really, really cool watching you do this. And thanks to you, Mark, and Bill, of course, for running this event. Hey, it's yeah. my pleasure. Thank you both. So, <laughs> Barbarian Kung Fu, love that name, says, that carnage is sick, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It's good. All right. Well, Bill, I, is there uh, anything you want to, Bill, is there anything you want to add before we wrap this up? Uh, you know, not really. I think that, uh, you know, I, I just love watching Paula work. Paula, you know, from back all the way back to the San Diego shows when you would set up with the uh, the mirror and everything, so everybody had an angle at your work. I mean, I, to me, this is like you know watching you back then too. You always you always like getting in front oh. of people. You know, I liked watch. I actually watched your you, the, the I think it was on YouTube the video of you doing the uh, the Iron Man piece that you sold yesterday. Just the headshot. I mean, it's great. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. That. yeah. I love the fact that you you know you really like to show everybody that you know that the process and the work that you do and and then doing it here in front of everybody during a panel is, you know it's even better it's it's almost like we're back at San Diego watching you work. Mark, I'm I'm assuming you're seeing what I'm putting up on screen. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, you know we were thank, planning thank you, on. You're welcome, Paul. We were uh, sorry, uh, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to walk over that bill. I apologize. I just wanted to make sure Mark saw what was being posted. Yes, I am. Uh, we we're planning on auctioning it off here as well, but obviously um, uh, Batman is taking precedence. Uh, so um, I think we're going to do it through my email newsletter. So if you haven't signed up on splashpageart.com for my email newsletter, uh, I will um, email tomorrow um, and offer two spots uh, at a set price after I get on the same page with Paolo uh, tonight. Uh, and then the first two people to email me back after I send that email out um, will win those spots. Um, so I think that's how we're going to do it. So okay. If you haven't signed up for the email newsletter, um, it's at the bottom left um, of splashpageart.com. Uh, and I will send out an email uh, tomorrow on that. Okay. Last chance, folks. We're at $300 currently. Peter Rowe has the high bid. If anybody wants to beat that, you got about 30 seconds to get your bid in on the chat. We're watching you, but we're going to wrap this up. A uh, huge thank you to Paulo Rivera. Dude, just keep doing what you're doing. We're all loving it. Thank you. And it's great to talk to you again. And Bill, I think I'm going to jump out here so I can get ready for my next panel. You got this? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. Mark, good to see you. Yep. Take right. care, Mark. Everybody you, take sir. care. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hey, Mark. Maybe give a, um, I don't know, what time is it? What's, give people 30 seconds and count this out. Uh, you got, yeah. what is it at right now? 300, and we're going to go 300 once. Last chances for people, 300 twice. All right. Last chance. Here we go. It looks like it's going to get sold to Peter Rowe. Peter, you are the winner at 300. If you email me, mark at splashpageart.com, um, we can get on the same page. Uh, obviously, I have to get these pieces from Paolo uh, before I can ship them out to everybody. 
Um, so uh, just drop me an email and I'll get on the same page with you. Uh, so um, great stuff as always. Uh, looking forward to seeing it finish, Paolo. Me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so I will drop you a line this evening and we can uh, um, work things out for the four by sixes that we offer tomorrow. All right. Sounds good to me. Well, right, thanks for wearing the old school splash page shirt there. Yeah. I've got one like you're wearing. I don't know when I got that. It was like when you really wanted me to be a part of the team. But uh, I, I, I prefer the vintage look. Ah, uh, well, yeah. yeah. You were always there, part of the team, whether you whether you worked or not. That was another matter. But Yeah, well, we, won't, <laughs> we, won't, we won't get into that. We won't get into that. You and Chris uh, have, uh, have the splash page yes. shirt. So. That is true. All right, uh, Paul. Thanks again, man. I do appreciate it, Mark, as well. And uh, and you definitely will be invited to come back in May. I haven't picked it. Just so everybody knows, we haven't set the date in May yet. Uh, we did it on the last weekend in May, um, you know, six months ago. We just got to kind of check the calendar and see what works best for uh, for everybody and myself in in particular, since I kind of run everything. But uh, It'll probably be around the same time last weekend. I mean, second to last weekend in May. But I'd really like to have uh, Paulo back again if he's if he's able. So yeah, I'm we'll definitely for it. Cool. All, All right, right, everybody. Thanks for attending. And uh, it, let's see, we, we've only got four hours left of the show. So uh, if you're going to be contacting anybody as far as picking up any new pieces of art. You need to do so uh, before 10 o'clock Eastern because the halls all close and you can't get in anymore after that. So you won't be able to see anything. We'll be able to contact anybody. So definitely Mark's got a booth at Splash Page Art underneath the exhibitor section, uh, dealer section. Definitely go ahead and check out his uh, booth and pick up some art before the show ends. Thanks again, everybody. Yep.